wish I could say that this battle was amazing, but I can't, as this would be dishonest of me. Not to say that the battle was bad, cause it wasn't. Quaxley evolved, Dot learned some valuable lessons, Tinka Tink got to partake in her first serious battle, and we finally got to see Larry in action. These are all good things that add value to this battle and would make it great if it wasn't for several things that unfortunately bring it down. Namely that Dot lost, completely at that, as in she did not defeat even one of Larry's Pokemon, Tinka Tink was taken out really fast and she was unable to do much, which yeah, is understandable but still unfortunate, and I feel that the battle ended too abruptly, with both sides using Terrasto to use only one move. They really could've dragged out this last part of the battle a little more, which would have elevated it more. Put all this together and you get a battle that had positives and negatives in equal measure, which means that it ended up being just alright. Beyond the battle, Larry finally getting the spotlight and how they wove Quaxwell's lore into Quaxley's behavior and personality in order to make the evolution feel fitting and deserved allowed the episode to rise above some of the negatives of the battle to land in a more favorable place. So let's dive deeper into this episode to see exactly what it did right and what it did wrong. But before we do, what exactly happened in this episode? Let's recap. In this episode, Dot and friends arrive at the Medali Gym only to find that Larry is not here, forcing them to look for him in town. Before they can though, Quaxley runs off, forcing everyone to run after him. They all soon arrive to what attracted Quaxley's attention, an Oricorio and its trainer Diva dancing. Quaxley decides to dance too, but Dot stops him saying that they need to find Larry. Diva says that she knows where to find him but will only reveal this if they have a dance off. Quaxley dances first, weaving low kick into his steps. Oricorio responds with some very elegant dance moves, made better by its signature move Revelation Dance. Inspired, Quaxley mimics Oricorio. They both get even more fired up as they dance in unison to the best of their ability. Diva is impressed by Quaxley. She praises him for being able to weave low kick and revelation dance into his dancing. As promised, she reveals where Larry is. Unsurprisingly, if you've played the games, he's at the Treasure Eater which Dot and the company know from last episode. Larry, who just had lunch, approaches them to greet them and introduce himself. Hilariously and shockingly, Liko and Roy realize here that Larry from the Elite Four and Larry the Gym Leader are one and the same. Since his boss will not be pleased if he spends too much time chatting, Larry has the eatery reveal its battlefield so that they can get to the test right away. Since he just ate, he says that they shouldn't strain themselves too much. He also explains that Dot must use two Pokemon and she will be judged on how well she can use Terrastal under such a condition. Larry sends out the Dunsparce as his first Pokemon while Dot opts to go with Quaxley citing that Tinka Tink has never battled before. The battle begins with Quaxley using Water Gun, which the Dunsparce easily blocks with its tail. Quaxley takes advantage of this to close in with Liquidation, but the Dunsparce uses Glare to stop him in his tracks, literally. The Dunsparce follows up with Boon Burst, which Quaxley is unable to avoid due to the paralysis. Seeing the pinch they are in, Dot decides to switch Pokemon. While Tinka Tink is adorably raring to go, the Dot Sparse quickly intimidates her, though Quaxley cheers her on, which makes her braver. 
The dawn sparse begins with glare, but Tinka Tink adorably uses her hammer as a blindfold to avoid it. Even cuter and hilariously, she avoids a hyper drill despite being unable to see. She then counters with brutal swing, leading to an intense Beyblade clash. Eventually, they both cancel each other out. Quaxley tries to mimic the spinning, but the paralysis stops him. Tinka Tink goes for another Beyblade brutal swing, but Larry switches Pokemon. He sends out Staraptor instead, who easily avoids Tinka Tink by simply flying. It then uses Wing Attack to unfortunately knock her out just as she was left dizzy from the spinning. Left without a choice, Quaxley, who is still practicing his spinning, rejoins the battle. He uses Water Gun, which Staraptor shrugs off. Quaxley then uses Pound, but Staraptor blows him away with Hurricane. It then uses Air Slash, forcing Quaxley to run around the zigzagging. A smokescreen is left behind, allowing Quaxley to sneak up for a liquidation. However, the paralysis stops him mid-attack, and he takes a wing attack. Dot is frustrated because nothing she tries is working. Larry makes her realize that she is not battling alone. Quaxley is with her and he's got his own ideas, namely mimicking others to improve his dancing. He is even imitating Staraptor. Dot decides to embrace this. She tells Quaxley to weave moves together like when he dances. He uses low kick while dancing like Oricorio. He breathes in deeply like the Don Sparse to use Water Gun. He uses Pound while flapping his wings like Staraptor. And he uses Liquidation while spinning like Tinka Tink. Staraptor retaliates with Wing Attack, but Quaxley wins the clash. This successful barrage of moves makes Quaxley a ball. Inspired by this, Dot terrestrializes Quaxwell, who uses a boosted liquidation. While Staraptor uses Air Slash, it's no use. Just as things are looking up for them, the paralysis kicks in once more. Seeing this as a clear chance to turn the tables, Larry terrestrializes Staraptor, who uses Facade, boosted by both Terrasto and the Paralysis, to end the battle. I love that Staraptor pays Quaxwell back for all the mimicking. While Dot is frustrated, Larry soon reveals that she still passed the test. Since she battled efficiently with two Pokemon, she evolved Quaxley, she used Terrastal at the right time, and she was able to bring out the best in Quaxley by realizing what he is best at. Dot believes that Larry battled in a way that allowed her to learn and do all of this, but he denies the allegations. Dot bows to catch up to Quaxwell, who has now surpassed her in terms of growth. To celebrate, they all partake of some Fire Blast Onigiri, which most of them find delicious. Hilariously, Larry is built for this, which he does not take well. The episode ends with Dot and Quaxwell happily enjoying the Onigiri together, showing that they are now closer than ever. Again, it's understandable that Tinka Tink did not do much. I mean, it was her first serious battle, and against a gym leader, no less. Having her do very well would have been unrealistic. However, even though I know why it happened, it doesn't mean I need to like it. Precisely because it was her first serious battle, I wanted to see her do more to perform better, to show some potential for growth and improvement later down the line, to make the best of her long-awaited chance in the spotlight, which is why her short and lackluster performance disappoints me greatly. Now I can't really complain that she did not even get to learn a new move to at least spice up her first battle a little, since prior to this battle, she only had one known 
at least she revealed that she knows Brutal Swing, which she put to great use by becoming a Beyblade Hammer. I do think this was pretty cool. Of course, Tinka Tink was tossed aside so that Quaxley could take the spotlight. While Tinka Tink deserved the focus more, since Quaxley has obviously been front and center in everything Dot related, I get that Dot had to have one of her Pokemon above, since she was behind on this front. And Quaxley was the most realistic and plausible choice. I love that weaving moves into his dancing became his battling style. Not only is it unique, suitable for a Pokemon known for dancing and cool, but it also made his evolution more fitting. Since Quaxwell's lore mentions how it learns and practices its dancing by observing Pokemon and people from various regions, which is exactly what Quaxley Diva and her Oricorio were instrumental in showcasing and bringing this out, which is precisely why they appeared in this episode. This was their role. Honestly though, I think episode 58 should have focused on this instead of random eatery management. Sure, this would have meant no King Gambit, but I love Diva's design, so it would have been nice to see more of her. Plus, what Dot and Quaxley learned from her and Oricorio is far more valuable than what they got from helping the Anything Eatery. Meaning episode 58 could have been a far more valuable and enjoyable preamble episode leading into the battle. Moreover, this would have meant that episode 59 could have fully focused on the battle, allowing it to be longer. Something that could have been leveraged to give Tinka Tink more time so she could have done more, and Quaxwell could have had more time to battle post-evolution, since it only got to use one move and then it was instantly one-shotted. Meaning we didn't get to see much from it after evolving, which is disappointing. Extending the Terrastal action for both Pokemon could have been yet another benefit. So basically, most of my gripes with the battle could have been fixed. Only one of them would have remained. Namely the fact that Dot lost even after Quaxley evolved. Something I, and many of you, did not expect. I get that yeah, she was facing a gym leader that is also a member of the Elite Four, and she's not exactly a skilled battler yet. But considering that she lost against Iono and defeated Poppy because of Iono, having her lose again just feels wrong. Especially after her strongest Pokemon evolved. Poor Dodd just cannot catch a break. She didn't even defeat one of Larry's Pokemon. Hopefully she gets a win soon. All that being said though, overall the battle was decent. It had some cool moments and clashes like the Beyblade battle and Wing Attack vs Liquidation, plus it was fairly dynamic with several cool instances of fast paced movements and solid animation. So the battle was not without merits. Finally I love that Larry got his time to shine at last. His dismay at being billed for the Onigiri his acceptance that Liko and Roy did not realize who he was because he tends to blend into the background due to his lack of presence, his request to battle while taking it easy since he just ate, him stretching when it was time to get serious, and his repeated mentions of his boss and how she wants him to take his job seriously, all beautifully showcase just what makes Larry such a beloved and relatable character. Moreover, this was all just hilarious. I also love and appreciate that he taught Dot some valuable lessons even though he is such a laid back individual. So yeah, overall this episode was decent. While it disappointed me in some areas, meaning that it could have been better, the battle being alright overall, Quaxley improving so much and evolving, especially in such a fitting way, Dot growing even more as a character and battler, 
and Larry wonderfully being, well, Larry, all made sure that this episode was able to rise above its shortcomings to end up as a pretty decent showing. But that's the review and the video. Please let me know what you think of this episode in the comments below, and click on the links on screen now to see my reviews of the previous three episodes. I will see you over there. Thank you so very much for watching.